So we are going to start chapter 2, which is about operating system structures. In chapter 1, we briefly described the concept of an operating system, what are the components of an operating system, then we discussed the hardware components, storage, okay, and some concepts such as what is a process, what is a program, uh, what is main memory, what is secondary memory, okay, what is caching. And then in this chapter, we are going to discuss the operating system structure in details. So first, we describe the operating system as a software which provides services. Operating system provides services to the users, to processes and other systems. And then we will discuss the various ways to structure the operating system. We will see different examples of operating systems and how they differ from uh, how they are different from one another. And finally, uh, I hope you know how to install an operating system. In the course of introduction to operating system, you already learned how to install Unix or Linux system, Ubuntu system or uh, Linux Mint. You have already installed, and then. You should also know by now, hopefully, you can install the Windows operating system. So we are not going to discuss the installation, but maybe just how to uh, how the boot process of an operating system works. So operating system services. What are operating system services? We know that operating system can do two things. One. It can provide an environment for execution of programs. So it's, if there is no operating system, you cannot execute any program. That's one thing. The second thing is the operating system provides services to the programs and the users. So in general, operating system can have these functionalities one which are related to the user interface the other type of functionality is related to the program execution and the third type is about the IO operations and further we will see more things such as file system manipulation communication error detection etc we are going to discuss them one by one so the first type of service provided by the operating system is that operating system, any operating system in general, has a user interface. And we can have different types of user interfaces. One type of user interface is the command line interface. Can you give me an example of command line interface? Do you know what is a command line interface? Sorry, what? Unit instruction? No, no, no. Command line interface, if you remember from the course of introduction to operating system, then it's where actually you enter the command. For example, Linux terminal. Or maybe here in terms of Windows, you have the command prompt. So a command prompt is actually where you execute instructions. So here in this window, I'm showing you the command prompt. You can have something like DIR. Okay, you cannot see it. Okay, just wait. Let me show you the screen here. So this is an example of a command prompt. Okay, so uh, in here I enter the command of dir. Okay, so it shows me the contents of this directory. Similarly, you can do cd to move to some other directory and so on. So in command line interface, you can enter commands but normally you don't use mouse it does not have support for mouse only the keyboard input and when you enter a command you press enter the operating system executes the command and when the command execution is finished the operating system is waiting for your next command in this example now the operating system is waiting for my command do you understand many of the systems they include both command line interface and graphical user interface okay so for example in microsoft windows we have both the gui which means 
the windows and menus and all those things as well as the command line interface okay this is called powershell and i showed you before that if you run the cmd command it will open the command prompt which is a command interface similarly in mac os you also have the gui interface and the unix kernel and then both the unix and linux kernels they have command line interface by default and you can also use the gui interface and in linux and unix there are different gui interfaces available you have the choice to use gnome kde cde and there are many many others test screen interfaces they are used in mobile devices and tablets and they do not support mouse instead you have to use fingers for various gestures so you have one finger two finger three finger or up to four finger support for actually doing various types of actions for opening applications for changing screens for doing other other uh, type of gestures inside the applications and finally you also have voice commands so you can talk to your device and it will carry out the command example google assistant and in ios you have siri finally you can also uh, have voice commands in windows okay there is something uh, an assistant uh, an application which is called cortana so the cortana listen to you and it replies back or, or it acts on your commands this is example of mac os 10 gui okay now we come to the topic of system calls what is a system call we have discussed it a few times before and here we are going to discuss it in detail a system call is actually the interface between your applications or the user applications and the operating system why because we discussed before operating system provides different services and the programs which need those services they use system calls to get access to those services what type of services we have seen services related to devices services related to access of processor and ram okay management of processes what do you want to do with the process okay create a process delete a process and terminate a process abort a process all of these they require access to operating system okay uh, do you hear me okay so an operating system provides certain services and to access those services the operating system also provides system call now because you have different programming languages for example c c++ java python c sharp etc okay and operating system may be run uh, may be uh, created in only one language for example c so how do they communicate for this purpose you have application programming interface what is application programming interface or api an api is actually a set of functions okay a set of program code for a particular language which in this case will actually help you to access the system call interface so if you are uh, creating a program in the language of uh, in la java language so java has uh, java api and this api you have different functions to actually call the system calls from your code similarly you have win32 api if you are programming windows old windows new windows they have dotnet api then you have posix api okay and similarly uh, of course java virtual machine you have java api this is an example of how do you copy content which are found in one file to another file okay so you see here some steps of system calls which are executed by the operating system or your program when it's called operating system and you can see 
that it starts from the input file name, starting with the input file name, then asking the user to write the input file name, it accepts the input, then it asks the user to write the output file name, okay, it, it opens the input file, then it reads the content from the input file, and until the end it reads and write the output uh, to the output file. After that, it closes the output file and then it terminates. So every step is actually a system call. This is the example of standard API, the read function. It has file descriptor, okay, the first argument. The second argument is the buffer and then the number of bytes you want to read. We have, I think, already discussed this, so I will just move to the next thing, which is how do you implement system call. So for that purpose, actually, you have a table, system call table, okay, and in this table, you have a number, some digit, okay, or uh, an integer number, actually, and that number corresponds to a system call. So the operating system knows which number corresponds to which system call and the application when it calls some function the operating system find the map uh, and open this uh, system call run it and the result it ret is returned back to the user application. Now there are different types of system calls, system calls for process control, okay you can see there is a big list of system call for process control. Then there are system calls for file management and device management, okay, we have uh, discussed that before. And there are system calls for information maintenance, okay, for example, to get time or date, to set time of date of the system, okay. Similarly, uh, other system data, system information, user information, okay, uh, region information, language information, the, the there are system calls for these things. You have communication related system calls, okay, when different processes they communicate with each other, okay, and how to attach and detach remote devices. Now, system calls, uh, one final thing about system calls is about protection related system calls, okay. So, if you want to change some attributes of different resources to make it read, readable, writable or executable, okay, or to make get and set permissions, okay, or to allow or deny users to access something. These are different system calls. This example is actually a comparison of system calls that you will use in Windows and Unix and their objective is the same. So these are actual Windows 32 API system calls and these are Unix POSIX system calls, okay? Two different uh, application programming interfaces uh, or system call libraries for each of these operating systems. So for creating a process, you have create process and for deleting a process, you have exit process and so on. Now, in this example, what you see is that even a simple command like printf that you are going to use in your program, printf and then some message, this actually uses a system call. So printf is a standard C library function and it is implemented in terms of write system call. So when you ask printf command, it will execute the write command in the system call of the Windows or Linux operating system. The write system call will execute it, it will write something onto the screen and then it will return the control back to your program. The important thing here is to note that when you are executing a standard C library command, it is in user mode. But when you want to execute, or uh, the operating system wants to execute a system call, it will change to kernel mode. When the system call execution is finished, the control will return back to the program in the user mode. Now we are going to study some example operating systems. The first one is Microsoft DOS. Okay, and then we will study Unix, Android and iOS as well. Now what do you see here, Microsoft DOS, it was there in early 80s until 90s. Okay, this DOS stands for Disk Operating System. 
This is a single tasking operating system. What is single tasking? Can anyone tell me? Single tasking operating system? Only one program can be executed at one time. So when you load a program, you cannot execute any other program. You have to finish the program and then the control will return back to the operating system. Then you will execute another command to run another program and so on. So this is single tasking, okay? And even now, uh, if you run MS-DOS, for example, let me explain. Uh, if you buy, these days, if you buy a laptop from uh, Extra, for example, okay? So they will not give you Windows. For most of the laptops, because the Windows license is very expensive, so they will give you MS-DOS installed. Or you have to buy Windows, and then they will install Windows for you. So MS-DOS is there, you can test that. Or even you can download MS-DOS online and test in your uh, operating system. But since MS-DOS is already there as command shell, not completely, but commands of the MS-DOS are there in the command shell, so you can execute the commands. So the shell is invoked when the system is booted, and this shell means what? Where you enter the command. Okay. So actually, a uh, very simple thing is that when you run a process, it is created in part of the commands prompt. And when the process is executed, the command interpreter or the command prompt comes again, and there is free memory to run more programs. FreeBSD is an example of uh, Unix. Okay, this is a type of Unix. This is a multitasking system, and you can see there are many processes. So when you start it, maybe you had process A, and process A execution finished, so you run process B, process C, process D, and still there is some free memory, you can have more processes run inside this free memory. Okay, and also the interpreter is always available alongside the kernel in the memory. Now we study about system programs, why, what are system programs? These are different programs which are useful for uh, carrying out different activities such as creating or deleting files, status information and all those other information. Example is uh, in Windows you have the program which is called File Explorer. Okay. Similarly you have program like Notepad or Wordpad okay. and you have programs for printing, you have programs for connecting with HTTP or Telnet or FTP, etc. These are different programs. The important thing here is that the users, they know the application programs or the system programs, but they don't know the system calls. For them, the application programs are the important thing, not the system calls. Okay. So system programs, this is an example, uh, this is a list of examples of system programs, you should go through them, okay, we have to do it very quickly because we are running short of time, okay, and operating system structure of MS-DOS, uh, this session will discuss some structures of some operating system, for example, in MS-DOS, what do you see here, that you have these different layers, okay, so at the bottom, near the hardware, you have device drivers, which are for ROM BIOS device drivers. Then you have MS-DOS device drivers, which will communicate with the ROM device drivers. You have the resident system program, which is part of the operating system. You can call it as the kernel, which is always there in the operating system, in the RAM. Okay, this is called resident program, which will be there always. And finally, you have application programs. These programs are only uh, in the RAM when you execute them. When they finish execution, they are terminated. These programs are, uh, this program, which is a single program, it is removed from the RAM and another program may be loaded. So this is a very simple structure. The second example is that of Unix system structure. And in Unix system structure, you have again different layers, okay? But the important thing is, that here the kernel is advanced. So you have an interface between the hardware and the operating system and 
another interface between the applications, okay, system applications or user applications and the operating system. So there are two interfaces, one to the hardware and one to the operating system. And finally the user, they use these applications to do the tasks of the hardware, they use hardware to carry out their tasks. iOS structure, uh, at its base, it has core operating system, okay? Uh, it is based on Mac OS structure. On core operating system, you have core services, okay? Uh, which provides basic computing and database facilities. Then you have media services, and finally, you have touch services, which is called Poco Touch, okay? So all things related to touch, they are managed by the touch services. In Android, it's similar to uh, iOS, but important thing is that it is a modified Linux kernel, okay? And it has two important aspects on top of kernel. One is the set of libraries, and the other one is the framework, okay? Uh, which, uh, sorry, the uh, other one is the runtime, in which there are some other core libraries and the virtual machine. So can you tell me what is Dalvik virtual machine? What is Dalvik virtual machine? Can anyone tell me? So this is actually a form of Java virtual machine because in uh, 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 Android you have Java programming language. Now they are changing to uh, the programming language which is uh, Kotlin. Okay, but initially it was Java programming language. Just 